The sixth and last wife of Henry VIII was Catherine Parr, who went by Kate. Catherine and Henry were married three years, six months and 16 days. Her motto as Queen was, to be useful in all that I do. Catherine's badge is a maiden's head wearing a crown rising from a large Tudor rose. Catherine used her patron saint, St. Catherine of Alexandria, as inspiration for her badge. The maiden's head had long been associated with the Parr family. Maidens denote purity, redemption, virtuousness and justice. She was known for her love of impressive jewels, sumptuous French and Italian gowns and shoes. In one year she would order 47 different pairs compared to Anne Boleyn's 12 pairs. She was about 5 feet 10 inches tall, the tallest of Henry VIII's wives and she had red gold hair and hazel eyes. Catherine Parr was born in 1512. She was the eldest surviving daughter of Sir Thomas Parr and Maud Green. She was named after Henry's first wife, Catherine of Aragon. Catherine's initial education was similar to other well-born women, but she developed a passion for learning which would continue throughout her life. In 1529, when she was just 17, she married Sir Edward Burrow, who died in the spring of 1533. In the summer of 1534, she married John Neville, 3rd Baron Latimer. He was twice Catherine's age. In October 1536, during the Lincolnshire Rising, Catholic rebels appeared before the Latimer's home, threatening violence if Lord Latimer did not join their efforts to reinstate the links between England and Rome. Catherine watched as her husband was dragged away. Between October 1536 and April 1537, she lived alone in fear with her stepchildren, struggling to survive. Her husband escaped, but during the uprising of the North, Catherine and her stepchildren were held hostage at Snape Castle in Yorkshire. The rebels ransacked the house and sent word to Lord Latimer that if he did not return immediately, they would kill his family. When he returned to the castle, he somehow talked the rebels into releasing his family and leaving. In late 1542, Catherine was left a rich widow. By the 16th of February 1543, she had established herself as part of Lady Mary's household and it was there that Catherine caught the attention of the King. Although she had begun a romantic friendship with Sir Thomas Seymour, the brother of the late Queen Jane Seymour, she saw it as her duty to accept Henry's proposal of marriage. Henry never wanted to stomach a rival gave Thomas Seymour a posting in Brussels to remove him from court. Catherine married Henry on the 12th of July 1543 at Hampton Court Palace. She was the first Queen of England to also be Queen of Ireland. Praised for her virtue, wisdom and gentleness, Catherine provided the closest thing to a stable family life that Henry's three children had known. She proved an effective nurse to Henry, now weakened by oozing leg ulcers. But Catherine did not forget her religious learnings. She secured the release of reformers in prison for their views. She placed leading Protestant thinkers in her own household and that of the heir, Prince Edward. She conducted Bible studies among her ladies-in-waiting and talked religion with the king. Her Prayers and Meditations, an anthology work published in November 1545, was hailed by scholars and fired female education among the nobility. The second book, The Lamentations of a Sinner, analysed correct behaviour for Christians, observing that married women should be obedient to their husbands. Henry reportedly thanked God for sending him so faithful a spouse and declared to the assembled privy council that when he died they should pay Catherine the colossal amount of £7,000 annually and that she would keep all of her jewels she acquired 
as queen. The queen's religious views were viewed with suspicion by anti-Protestant officials. A vigorous religious argument between king and queen had been overheard by Bishop Stephen Gardiner, who warned Henry against harboring a serpent within his own bosom. Henry listened, then signed a warrant for Catherine's arrest on grounds of heresy, which would no doubt end with Catherine losing her head. When a loyal servant dropped the warrant outside the Queen's rooms, she collapsed in hysterics. While her ladies discarded banned books on religion, she hastened to the King, who was in the gardens. Henry steered the conversation to religion, commenting that, Ye are become a doctor, Kate, to instruct us. Catherine replied, I am but a woman, with all the imperfections natural to the weakness of my sex. Therefore, in all matters of doubt and difficulty, I must refer myself to your majesty's better judgment. As to my lord and head, the strategy worked. As the guards came to arrest Catherine just moments later, Henry cried, knave, fool and beast, and lashed out at them, and Queen Catherine would be given a set of gorgeous new jewels as an apology. Married to King Henry at the age of 31, Catherine was a prime pick for a stepmother. Elizabeth, overlooked by earlier wives, except for Anne of Cleves, forged a close bond with Catherine through their joint love of learning. At 11, Elizabeth translated Catherine's own best-selling prayers and meditations into French, Italian and Latin as a present for her father and stepmother. The 27-year-old Princess Mary joined Catherine's household from the beginning, acting as her faithful friend and companion. Nine-year-old Edward took a steady interest in his stepmother's attempts to improve her Latin and commended her efforts. She was to him very dearest mother. He also was not above begging her to keep the Catholic Mary from all the wiles and enchantments of the evil one. When Henry VIII died on January 28, 1547, Catherine was free to shape her own future. She played no role in the regency for nine-year-old King Edward VI. Her official duties ended and Catherine finally looked to her own happiness. Less than four months after Henry's death, the Queen Dowager married Lord Thomas Seymour. She was scolded by Edward for marrying so soon after his father's death. They lived at Chelsea Manor in London with Catherine's 14-year-old stepdaughter, the Princess Elizabeth. Unknown to Catherine, Thomas became overly friendly with Elizabeth. He would often visit her bedroom to tickle and try and kiss her. Catherine played along once, holding Elizabeth down while Thomas cut her gown in strips. The truth of Seymour's infatuation destroyed her friendship with Elizabeth and badly rocked her marriage. In March 1548, at the age of 35, Catherine became pregnant. This pregnancy was a surprise as Catherine had not conceived during her first three marriages. Catherine's daughter, Mary, was born on August 30th, 1548 at Sudley Castle, but Catherine would not survive the birth. Delirious, she raged against her husband for hours on end. Catherine died on the 5th of September, 1548. Her will would leave her ambitious husband all of her property, but he would not long survive her. He was executed for treason on the 20th of March, 1549. The fate of her child Mary Seymour is unknown, but she most probably did not survive infancy. Catherine's funeral was held on the 7th of September 1548. Her chief mourner was Lady Jane Grey. She was buried in St Mary's Chapel on the grounds of Sudley Castle. She is the only queen to be buried in a private residence. And this concludes the video. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed this, please click the like button, give it a thumbs up, and please subscribe for future videos. Thank you.